So to my mind, uh, there's massive opportunity because uh, we're in the midst of uh, one of the biggest uh, disruption that will take place in the world on account of uh, artificial intelligence. And uh, uh, this will be a, a $15.7 trillion economy uh, opportunity because, and that's uh, $15.7 trillion according to PwC in its re recent study, which is more than the GDP of uh, USA and China combined. And uh, for India, it presents a great opportunity because uh, India is the only country in the world with a billion biometric, with a billion mobile, and a billion bank account. We've just come out with an artificial in intelligence strategy document, which talks about artificial intelligence for all. Uh, the Western world has always innovated. I mean, you go to Silicon Valley, it's very innovative. But it's always innovated for uh, you know, driverless cars, or it's innovated for war machines, which Vivek represents very effectively. Uh, but it, India's challenge is, like the challenge of uh, much of the world is, how do you provide seed and fertilizer to your farmers based on uh, weather and soil conditions? Or how do you provide access to quality health using technology? Or how do you leapfrog on improving learning outcomes in education? And uh, one of the great things about India is that uh, data is quite owned by public entities here, unlike USA, where data is owned by Google and Facebook, and unlike China, where data is owned by Alibaba and uh, Tencent and Baidu. In India's case, uh, data is owned by public entities, Aadhaar, which is a biometric. So over a billion Indians' data is owned by Aadhaar or GST, our biggest, it's one tax across the country. Uh, it's like one single tax across Europe. I mean, and this is totally a digitized database or the new health insurance scheme, Ayushman Bharat, which is providing health insurance to 500 million Indians. 500 million Indians means more than the population of America, Europe, and Mexico put together. And that's huge amount of data. And in India, 99.6% of Indians pay tax online. It's all digitized. And 96% of that gets settled within a period of 90 days. So that's massive, massive data. So you have huge amount of data. I mean, smaller countries like Singapore may have data, but these are small amount of data of small individuals. You have massive data. The challenge is how do you convert it into intelligent data? And that's what many of our startups are doing. I mean, amazing work is being done by some very dynamic startups. I mean, if you look at SIGTUPL, what does it do? It looks at uh, all, all the data, blood, urine, uh, uh, you know, x-rays, all together, sends it to a patho pathologist and gives you a result to the ultimate consumer all within five minutes flat. Or what does SATSUR does? It provides, able to look at data of all farmers together in a defined area and give you uh, exactly the amount of fertilizer you need to put in and exactly the amount of water you need to put in depending on soil and weather condition. It's all data, intelligent data through machine learning and artificial intelligence. Uh, so this is the massive opportunity. I mean, India is in the midst of you have 400 startups doing artificial intelligence work using this data which we are putting out in public domain to be able to make India one of the biggest disrupting countries in the world today. And that is really the dynamism of India today, to be able to disrupt in education. There's a young girl called Aditi who runs a startup called Imbai. What is she doing? She is tracking every single boy who's studying, every single boy and girl who's studying in Rajasthan, tracking them down longitudinally, latitudinally, much like you track Uber cars and on learning outcomes. So if you're not performing well in maths or history or uh, psychology, you're giving extra class, all based on artificial intelligence, and the learning outcomes have jumped up radically on account of this. Or look at a young girl uh, who started with Mandarin and Japanese, uh, Pranshu Bandari, who started with Mandarin and Japanese, and in four years' time has taught 45 million Indians how to speak English. 
She figured out that the challenge was not Mandarin and Japanese, but Indians wanted to learn English. 45 million Indians, no school or college has been able to do this. There's all the power of artificial intelligence. There's all the power of data being used as intelligent data through machine learning and artificial intelligence. So India is in the midst of one of the biggest disruptions, one of the biggest revolutions ever taken place anywhere across the world. And you'll see much of that progress happening. And why India is growing at 7.5% per annum year after year is because of the energy, vibrancy and dynamism of much of many of these startups. When I joined my career and I was working, uh, you know, only 15% of the benefits that we used to pass on to our beneficiaries, many of these government schemes which go to the poorest of the poor, only 15% used to reach the poorest of the poor. Now in over 500 schemes, we are transferring money straight into the bank account of the beneficiary who lift, takes it out using biometrics. The power of biometrics and straight into the bank account of the beneficiary. And therefore, we've done huge, huge savings, 90,000 crores, which has enabled us to spin out a number of social welfare schemes simply on the power of technology, simply on the power of biometrics, simply on the power of artificial intelligence. That's what India is doing. And this disruption, uh, when it impacts India, it's not the 1.3 billion people of India, but it's the 7.7 .7 billion people of the world who will be moving from poverty to middle class in the next two decades. And that, this, this is the big challenge. How do you transform the lives of 7 billion people of the world, rather than doing experiments around driverless cars and war machines?